Chapter 41 41 Radio and Watermelon You are listening at NovelFull.audio 41 Radio and Watermelon Tang Mingzhou and Tang Mingqi exchanged a glance as the seriousness of the matter dawned on them. They dashed to the warehouse to take a radio and put some lithium batteries in. Let's hope we can reach them. A man's anxious voice came through right after an initial burst of static. Can anybody read me? Is anyone there? This is La Hue Supermarket on Yenkong Road, one story underground. We have 20 survivors here and we're requesting immediate support, over. They learned from their previous encounters, however. Yu Ching hardened his heart and quickly switched to another frequency. They switched the radio off half an hour later. They couldn't take any more of it. That was because, after switching the frequencies a few times, all they received were distress calls from all over South City. There were begging, threats and cries. They came from the elderly, the children, and pregnant women who were about to give birth. However, there were more calls from helpless people who were surrounded by zombies. However, they still couldn't contact Uncle Yu's men. It was like looking for a needle in a haystack. However, it was still the best option available to them. I'm going out for a walk. Yu Ching stood up, feeling disappointed. Tang Mingzhou patted his shoulder without saying a word. Yu Ching approached the main entrance of Tsuedi Lake Garden without realizing it. Just as he was about to turn around and leave, he remembered that Mr. Tang and the others were guarding the gate. And so, he rushed over. His good friend was being too careless when he let the two elders guard the gate on the first day. Hopefully, nothing had happened. However, when he got closer, he realized things were not what he expected. He saw Mr. and Mrs. Tang had moved two chairs and sat in front of the security room, each of them holding a slice of watermelon and eating it with a spoon without a care in the world. They would spit out a seed or two from time to time and then hit the mosquitoes using the fans in their hands. Yu, Yu Ching felt as if he transported himself into another time. It was as if tonight was just another quiet summer night where the elderly would take their stools and sit on their front porch to enjoy the cool air. Cheng. While Su Su told her that there was no need to be too courteous with him, Mrs. Tang still greeted him seeing that they were going to join up with his uncle. Here, let me cut a melon for you. Yu Cheng was bewildered. This is just nice. You can have one half while Susu can have the other half. She's sleeping inside, so don't wake her up. Yu Cheng glimpsed into the security room. He saw that the wind was blowing gently at the light blue curtain, faintly revealing the slender figure behind it. It distracted him for a moment before he forced himself to look away. He faked a cough before asking, are there no zombies tonight? Oh, we killed them all, Mr. Tang tried to say in a calming manner, but he couldn't help but let out a grin. There were about a hundred of them, but we killed them all in one fell swoop. We got tired after that, so we were having some watermelon for a snack. Yu Ching frowned. So, while they were working hard to kill the zombies outside, Tang Susu was sleeping inside feeling nothing. Even if she wouldn't help, she shouldn't be so comfortable about it. Mrs. Tang was just about to praise Susu for killing over 20 zombies on her own when someone could be heard shouting nearby. Dot, didn't you say that you'll give half of the watermelon to Susu and the other half to me? Why did you give it to him? It was Tang Mingchu, who had just returned from a stroll. Yu Cheng had just dug out a spoonful of watermelon and his saliva had already filled his mouth. He didn't even bring it to his mouth yet as he held the spoon in mid-air stiffly. Wasn't he worried about the people who were coming to find him? Why was he sitting in a chair and eating a watermelon? You can have it back. I don't want the one you've already eaten. Tang Mingchu's face was full of disgust. It was at this moment that a long yawn came from behind the curtain. The delicate figure was like a tiny hook, grazing at the surface of one's heart. So noisy, unhappiness filled her hoarse yet sweet voice. When Yu Ching heard it, he felt as if a jolt of electricity had just shocked his entire body, leaving him with a numbing sensation for an instant. 
Tang Ming Chu ran in with displeasure on his face. It's all my fault. I hate him so much. Fine, get rid of him, Tang Su Su said in a dreamlike state and kicked him impatiently. A fair and flawless foot reached out from behind the curtain, but Tang Ming Chu nudged it back in. All right, Su Su. There's a pervert outside. Don't let him see you. Meanwhile, the said pervert fled while the rest of the family was comforting her. Chapter 42 42 Prepare to Pillage You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. 42 Prepare to Pillage Tang Susu slept all the way through dawn. When she walked out of the room as she stretched, she saw that Jean Dehai and his men had already arrived, but her brothers had stopped them. Only when they realized that she had woken up did they let them approach and guard the gate. The three of them walked over and examined her face. Did you sleep well last night? Are you hungry? I made some porridge from goji berries and glutinous rice. It's quite sweet. They knew Tang Susu's sweet tooth very well. Tang Susu paused for a moment and let out a yawn. Let's go back for breakfast then. The family left in haste. All of them were very good dot looking and elegant. They were the center of attention even when they were chatting and laughing with each other. She's so pretty. A youngster said as he stood next to Foam Lee dumbfounded. TCH. Have you forgotten what she looked like when she was on a killing spree yesterday? Foam Lee said as she lowered her voice, clearly a little afraid of Tang Susu. Meanwhile, a female friend beside her said fervently, but she looks so cool too. I've never seen a bashful girl that can be so fierce before. She's so cool. I want to cheer for her. Shen Xiaoman, just whose side are you on? Foam Li became furious. Dot the cute girl stuck her tongue out apologetically. I'm sorry. I won't say it anymore. Don't be angry. Don't forget that she's a cold dot blooded and selfish murderer. Shen Xiaoman's face went red as she wanted to refute her, but she could only swallow all her complaints. Feng Li glared at Tang Susu's silhouette as she left, surrounded by her family. The thought of her parents who she couldn't contact no matter how hard she tried entered her mind and she could feel her heart sink. She asked, Yi Fei, why don't you go talk to her? Yi Fei was drooling as he stared at Tang Susu's slim waist. He was surprised. Do you mean what I think you mean? If you can win her over, I'll call you daddy. Yi Fei was a well-known playboy. He was also a scumbag and a rotten man. All the young women who he had deceived ended up having abortions or being forced out of school after they attempted suicide by cutting their wrists. He he, Yi Fei rubbed his hands together. Just wait and observe, then. There had never been a woman he couldn't get his hands on since he was a child. He had always believed that he was as good as the four men around Tang Susu. He was perhaps even better than them. However, his appearance soon attracted the attention of the Tang family. Tang Mingqi's eyes were ice cold as he said, Mingchu, go. Teach him a lesson. Without saying another word, Tang Mingchu raised his half dot meter dot long saber and approached Yi Fei without making a sound. He then patted his shoulder lightly. Ah! Yi Fei bounced up from sheer terror before falling flat to the ground. He shouted as he trembled, Get away! Don't come any closer! Don't come near me! Idiot! When Yi Fei realized that Tang Mingchu was no zombie, he flew into a rage. Are you crazy? Are you trying to give me a heart attack? Stop being so pretentious. Tang Mingchu frowned and said, Just who do you think you are? What gives you the right to act like this in front of me? Get lost. Yi Fei could feel an invisible pressure mounting on him as his eyes narrowed. Just as he was about to leave, a beautiful figure in a floral dress walking out from the balcony on the second floor caught his attention. It was Tang Susu, whom he had been staking out for two hours. The young girl held a porcelain cup in her hand and looked over with her clear and watery eyes. Yi Fei stared upward at her in a stupor, 
as if she had mesmerized him. She's so beautiful. Tang Mingchu yanked him into the nearby alley in less than a second and beat him to a pulp. What the hell? You dare set your eyes on my little sister. I'll dig your eyes out and feed them to the zombies if you look at her again. I'm so sorry. I won't do it again. I won't do it again, Tang Susu looked down at the bludgeoned figure on the ground and let out a snort. Someone was bold enough to tempt fate. Her future husband would have to think about whether he could take on her three brothers. System, how many points do I have right now? You have won 17 plus 15 plus 19 plus 23 points up to this point. A total of 174 points. Seeing that she was getting closer and closer to 300 points, Tang Susu clenched her fists. You can look forward to leveling up. I'll kill more zombies tonight. However, it seemed like she didn't have enough money. Tang Susu gave it some thought and suddenly smirked. After we ransacked the area outside of the villa district, it seems like we forgot the area inside of the district. Are you intending to pillage? 008 rubbed his hands in excitement. Oh, my dear sweet system. Don't use the term pillage so loosely. This is called payback. Payback for provoking me. Chapter 43 43 An Eye for an Eye, in the bag you are listening at novel full dot audio. 43 An Eye for an Eye, in the bag before leaving, Tang Susu took off her dress wistfully and changed into a neater set of casual outfits. Meanwhile, the people downstairs were exchanging information about last night. Jean the High must have sent that person to investigate us to find out more about us. Not only does he want our supplies, but he also wants to get our weapons and seize control of all of us, Tang Mingzhou said coldly. Ha! He can't back his own ambitions up. I guess he must have a shady history. He thinks he can do whatever he wants when the world ends, Mr. Tang said with a hard expression on his face. He had thought that his daughter was being too suspicious in the beginning, but now he knew he had underestimated some of their intentions. They'll be even more cautious now that the ambush failed last night. We'll have to be even more careful next time, Tang Susu walked over. However, we can't let them roll over us. The whole family looked at her expectantly. What do you have in mind? Tang Susu narrowed her eyes as she smiled lovingly. We shall return the favor. Tang Mingchu couldn't help but shiver before rising to his feet. You want to attack their residence. That's right. She didn't ask her three brothers to accompany her this time around. Instead, she brought along her parents. Tang Susu had to force them to do something outlandish. This was the end of times. Those who made no progress would be eliminated. Mr. and Mrs. Tang didn't say a word. They snagged their weapons and followed their daughter to a villa in the back. Tang Susu took out her universal lock-picking toolkit she had been using and said, Dad, I'll leave this to you. Mr. Tang scratched his nose. He was a little hesitant, but his hands didn't slow down in the slightest. Clack. He unlocked the padlock. Tang Susu kicked the door open and antique furniture and decorations entered her eyes. 008 crowed excitedly like a rooster. I'm rich, I'm rich. Tang Susu walked in and scrutinized her surroundings. After making sure that there was no danger, she then split up with her parents. They went to gather supplies. As for her, she would be gathering the riches. Killing two birds with one stone. Following the system's instructions, Tang Susu took down an antique calligraphy painting hanging on the wall. This one is worth 10 million. She turned around and picked up a flower vase painted with a landscape. This is from the Kangxi era and it's worth 80 million. A chessboard made of Phoebe Zhenan wood and a purple clay teapot that was made during the Republic of China era and was no longer in production. Dot, these two are worth 30 million together. After taking almost everything that was worth something on the first floor, Tang Susu went to the second floor. She pried open the locked study room and pulled out the locked drawer with ease. 
This is an antique calligraphy copybook worth 50 million. The jade bangle in the box is worth 2 million. The unpolished jade stone in the room's corner is worth 10 million. Half an hour later, Tang Susu came out of the room, after she took everything that was worth anything. Congratulations! You have obtained 182 million wealth points. While Tang Susu had a great time, her parents returned empty. Handed. They either took the food or there was none in the first place. Mr. Tang was troubled about taking other supplies, thinking that was unbecoming of them. The result proved that he was overthinking the situation. The owners were no fools. They would have taken everything that was precious to them. On the other hand, the antiques and paintings that were priceless before the apocalypse had become worthless. They could not even trade the antiques for a steamed bun. However, all these worthless items could exchange all kinds of treasures for them. No matter how good a man Mr. Tang was, he couldn't resist such a great temptation. He entertained the thought for a long while before finally deciding to stay silent by asking his daughter to avoid taking everything. He had no right to say that. At least, not before he had the power to give them a carefree life. Tang Susu could sense that her kind father seemed to have learned something during the remaining journey. He became more active in pillaging instead of having to be pushed to do it. After emptying a few other houses, Tang Susu eventually found the fat man's residence, Hiroe. It was rumored to be a place containing countless pieces of jewelry and supplies from convenience stores. Chapter 44 44 300 million wealth points you are listening at novel full dot audio. 44 300 million wealth points the villa had been occupied for a long time. All kinds of hustle and bustle had disrupted the luxurious European dot style villa the developer had built. Piles of junk littered the place, and it was so messy that people had no place to walk on. However, Tang Susu had her eyes set on all kinds of dazzling gemstones in this place. Just as she was about to pick them up, 008 reminded her and said, These are common gems. They are worth very little. Have I grown your appetite so much to where you no longer want ordinary gemstones? However, Tang Susu was determined not to put any of them to waste as she pocketed one. Do you know how expensive the things you sell are? Even the most ordinary goods start at a million. Any of the better ones start at a hundred million. Is everything in your world that expensive? Sob. I am the shop that is connected to millions of worlds. I can supply you with whatever you want from any world. What about Hogwarts? Tang Susu asked with some curiosity. Yes, but I have to be upgraded to level 15. At level 18, you can even trade for fantastical beasts from the fantasy worlds. 008 said as he cast his bait. However, Tang Susu remained unmotivated. She didn't want to become a slave, working only on missions. However, her body was acting honestly by collecting all kinds of valuables. If the owner of the villa with the classical Chinese architecture was an antique collector. The owner of this villa was most likely a jewelry designer. All kinds of cutting and carving tools and leftover materials lay inside the villa while most of the finished jewelry was placed in another room. The room was over 20 square meters large and all kinds of racks filled the room. It was like a boutique, displaying all kinds of finished work. Tang Susu was overwhelmed. No woman could resist a room full of jewelry. She pulled Mrs. Tang over and enjoyed the dazzling spectacle together. Good heavens! Mrs. Tang couldn't contain her excitement and ran in. There's so many. My goodness, am I dreaming? All of this is fake, right? But the texture. I want this. Let me try it on. Mr. Tang, who was behind her, put on a dolphin necklace studded with diamonds on her, making no complaints. I have to try this too. I also want this. That one is very pretty, too. Ha ha. Since they're having their eyes on us, we don't have to give them any consideration. Seeing that her mother liked the jewelry so much, Tang Susu didn't scramble to take them all. 
Instead, she let her mother pick as many pieces of jewelry as she wanted. She would then exchange the rest for wealth points. After a while, she found another safe in the bedroom. When she opened it, there was a full stack of pink dot colored notes and two boxes. A top dot grade pigeon dot blood ruby and a pink diamond. 008 immediately cried out. It was a pleasant surprise. These two items were priceless. They are worth 50 million each. Even Tang Susu could not stop her heart from throbbing with elation. However, a light of pure scarlet seemed to flow out when she opened the box containing the pigeon dot blood ruby. It was like fresh blood, radiating a strange and cold sense of mystery. She didn't know why, but she didn't want to exchange it for wealth anymore. I'll keep this, for now. Exchange the rest. After her mother picked out the jewelry she liked, Tang Susu waved her hand and all of them disappeared. Congratulations. You have obtained 300 million wealth points. Satisfied, Tang Susu stopped collecting the valuables and turned around to look for the supplies from the convenience stores that might be hidden here together with her parents. You can spend 20 million to buy a machine that can search for materials. Otherwise, it will take too much time to find them on your own. If it was in the past, the poverty-stricken Tang Susu would say no to buying such a useless piece of equipment. But now that she had accumulated some wealth points, she had become much more generous. I'll buy one, bdnvl.m, the machine is now in place. Searching, Tang Susu waited and she received 008's report soon enough. Sorry, there are no supplies at your current location. It was at this moment that someone turned the villa's doorknob. Are we still continuing tonight? Chapter 45 45 Vengeance Out of Sight You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. 45 Vengeance Out of Sight Tang Susu dragged her parents, who hadn't reacted to it, to the side and hid them under the stairs that were covered by debris. What's wrong? Shush. A man and a woman opened the door and walked in. It was Jean de Hai and the woman wearing spectacles. I didn't expect them to be so alert. Seems like they already know what we're trying to do. It's all that brat's fault. I have to think of a way to get rid of her. The woman wearing spectacles cursed. Mr. Tang clenched his fists in an instant as his whole body surging with anger. Tang Susu cushioned his large hand and suppressed his urge to charge over and attack them. She's the main reason, yes. But their family is hard to deal with as well because they are too united. A strange smile appeared on Jean de Hai's rugged face. It would be a shame if their relationship with each other is ruined somehow. What a diabolical move. This time, it was Mrs. Tang who cannot suppress the wrath within her. Tang Susu glanced at her. That startled Mrs. Tang for a moment before she nodded in response. Tang Susu gave her something that looked like a talisman, and the two of them placed it on themselves. Hey! What are you doing? Mr. Tang asked in a whisper when he saw the mother and daughter stood up and walked straight toward Jean de Hai and the woman with spectacles. He chased after them. However, Jean de Hai and the other woman acted as if they did not see them and continued with their discussion. The best method is seduction. Unfortunately, we have no decent women here. The three kids might have high standards, but we can settle the old man with any young woman. His wife is old and unattractive. I believe that he's already planning to get rid of her, anyway. Mr. Tang's footsteps froze as Mrs. Tang pinched his belly. Don't you even dare. She hissed as she gritted her teeth. Father Tang was furious as he glared at the two people now sitting on a sofa. An idea appeared to Jean de Hai at this time. I think the girl called Fong Li is decent. With Tang Maoping's personality, I'm sure he'll fall for her, hee <laughs> hee, after I laced the trap with some honey and tears. Father Tang's expression darkened as he was being plotted against in front of his wife and daughter. Then, let his family catch them in bed at the perfect moment. Let's see if they can remain united after that. The woman's tone was filled with pride and jealousy. 
Suddenly, she let out a yelp as her head was twisted away violently. She looked at Jean de Hai in disbelief. You hit me. Mrs. Tang, who had just slapped the woman, dusted her hands as if dirt had stained them. A sly look flashed across Tang Su Su's face when she saw Jean de Hai frowning and was about to say something. She grabbed the arm of the woman and used it to strangle him while he was unprepared. Ha! Huh. What the hell? The woman let out a shriek when she realized something was controlling her. Jean de Hai's heart skipped a beat. But before he could dodge it, her sharp nails had already scratched his face. The left side of his face went numb and blood flowed. F asterisk CKU. That enraged Jean de Hai. He kicked the woman over from the sofa and she crashed into a pile of machines made of copper and iron. He touched his face and saw that blood covered his hand. Dot, are you crazy? The woman groaned. She was in so much pain that she could not even speak. The strange feeling that bound her had disappeared. However, the hair on her back stood up. It was as if something dangerous was glaring at her from somewhere she couldn't see. Behave yourself or I'll throw you out and feed you to the zombies. Jean de Hai left with a surly face after saying those harsh words. The two of them parted on bad terms as the instigator raised her eyebrows and smiled. She waved her little hand at her parents, signaling them to follow her. Mr. Tang was still a little confused. Since the supplies are not with Hiroe, that means they must be with Jean de Hai, Tang Su Su said as she speculated. It's already noon. The reason that he came back from the front must be because he wants to eat. Just as they were trailing behind Jean de Hai from a distance, the invisibility talismans on the three of them lost their effects all of a sudden. Who's there? Jean de Hai spun around, but all he could hear was the rustling of the leaves in the wind. Mr. and Mrs. Tang felt their hearts almost stop when they were pulled into the bushes. The two of them did not even dare to breathe too loudly. It was only after Jean de Hai had left far away that they slumped on the ground. Oh my god, that's just too much. Tang Su Su narrowed her eyes. She was just about to continue following him when 008 reported, search complete. The resources that you are looking for are in the villa to the front. Chapter 46 46 Realization Ambush you are listening at novelfull.audio. 46 Realization, ambush now that she had confirmed the resource's location, Tang Su Su could act much more efficiently. After Jean De Hai left eating a pack of self-heating rice box and two braised eggs, she seized the moment and broke into the room and took away a large amount of supplies that he had hidden. If you had known that this would happen, would you have done any evil deeds? Mr. Tang sighed with worry. Meanwhile, Mrs. Tang shook her head, saying not a word. You're only satisfied when you get everything out of someone. Tang Su Su hesitated for a moment and said, Dad, I hope you can accept some ways we are doing things now sincerely. I don't want you to give up your principles and make yourself upset in the end. Mr. Tang was stunned as he muttered, I'm not upset, then I hope both of you can be happier. Tang Su Su looked at them with a serious expression on her face. My sweet daughter. Mrs. Tang couldn't help but tear up as she complained, your father is old dot fashioned. Don't worry about him, just let him hold it in. Mr. Tang glared at her and said, you're making me look like I can't be flexible. It's just that I haven't been able to switch out my mentality from our normal world. Give me some time and I'll be able to adapt to this brutal world. Both mother and daughter exchanged a look and smiled. Mr. Tang pressed ahead and stashed away all of Jean De Hai's supplies. Tang Su Su then added, These supplies aren't for us. If there's a chance to help someone, there's no need to be stingy when we're powerful enough, we won't have to worry about being plotted against. We can do whatever we want, Tang Su Su described a fine future to Mr. Tang. Help the world when you're rich, but only help yourself when you're poor. Mr. Tang's heart was surging with emotions as he listened, and he became much more optimistic. He realized his daughter wasn't as cold and indifferent as he had thought. 
he also had a newfound motivation. If he was strong enough, he could help even more people. Tang Susu's lips curled up when she could see that Mr. Tang's mood had improved with her own two eyes. It was also because she had been busy these days that she had neglected the feelings of the people close to her. Her father had once volunteered to join the rescue teams and was a kind person. It would not be easy to change his mindset. But if he kept his thoughts only to himself, he could get sick if he did not get counseled. Tang Susu reflected on her actions. When they were back, she was going to prepare a table filled with delicious food for her family. The three of them completed their plan successfully and scurried home. What's that? Out of the corner of his eye, Mr. Tang seemed to have caught a figure flashing by and he stopped. Tang Susu frowned and looked in that direction. Just as she was about to make a move, two zombies raced out from the corner and jumped at them with bared fangs and brandished claws. Roar! Tang Susu's eyes lit up. To her, they were not some horrifying zombies, but they were walking points. However, Behind the walls, a pair of eyes full of jealousy were staring at her. Seeing that Tang Susu was standing there motionless, as if fear had overtaken her, she was so excited that her nails were digging right into the bricks. Hurry! Hurry and eat her! The young girl was filled with anticipation, not realizing that the person beside her had already turned pale. In a moment of anxiety, he shouted, Tang Susu! Run! Tang Susu looked in the direction where the shout came from and saw Feng Li leaving in haste. The edges of her lips curled. With a tap, she had already moved about five steps back in the blink of an eye. No one saw how she attacked, but the zombie that attacked her had its head and body severed. Tang Susu then almost immediately threw the blood dot stained machete toward Feng Li's back with cold eyes, ah. Feng Li's legs went weak when she turned around and saw the blade spinning toward her. She kneeled on the ground and shut her eyes in fear. Chapter 47 47 Zombie Intrusion, Efforts Wasted You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. 47 Zombie Intrusion, Efforts Wasted Tang Susu's figure flashed through like lightning and caught up with the machete in an instant. The sharp tip of the knife was about to stab into Feng Li's delicate face when a hand popped up and grabbed the hilt. The world seemed to have frozen in that instant. Shen Xiaoman stared at what happened in disbelief. It was a moment that she would never forget. The young girl's slender wrist turned with her movements light and graceful, yet filled with killing intent. She stepped forward and approached a zombie that had appeared behind Feng Li, cutting it down in a single slash. Roar! The zombie's muddy, gray eyes flashed with a trace of confusion. Its limited brain capacity made it unable to understand why a human, who was ten meters away a moment ago, appeared in front of it in the blink of an eye. And ended it in an instant. Thump! The corpse slumped to the ground. The young girl stood against the wind with an intense expression on her face. If you pull off something like this again, it won't end like this next time. Feng Li's eyes were wide open, but she was looking up at her as she kneeled in a cowardly manner in shock. This was a girl about the same age as her, who was loved by her family and had no worries about food and clothing during the apocalypse. Feng Li thought this person was just lucky enough to be with her family, and that was why she had everything. She had thought that the girl was feeble and incompetent. If it wasn't because of her family's protection, she would have ended in a worse situation than she had. She had thought that as long as she could reunite with her family, she would have nothing to fear. She could live with even fewer worries than Tang Susu. Feng Li's expression was one of infatuation and confusion. She seemed to have understood something, and she then collapsed to the ground and burst into tears. Dad, Mom, nothing. She had nothing left. Lily, Shen Xiaoman hurried over and hugged her as her heart ached. It's okay, you still have me. I'll always be with you. After getting two points, Tang Susu then turned around and was about to leave. Shen Xiaoman, who had just reminded her to run, explained what had happened. Lily didn't do it on purpose. It's just that. 
It's her 18th birthday when the apocalypse started. We had a birthday party at her villa, but her parents said they were busy with work and couldn't come. But, but, Shen Xiaoman was choking up when she seemed to have remembered something. Explain nothing to her. Feng Li wiped her tears away frantically. Tang Susu didn't care to listen to her, anyway. Seeing that her parents had already killed the other zombie, she said, let's go. The two of them understood those zombies were most likely drawn there by the girl called Feng Li who wanted to use them to hurt Susu. They didn't give her any smiles, naturally. How could she do something like this at such a young age? Mr. Tang mumbled as his mindset seemed to have shifted again and again on the same day. When they were halfway home, Tang Mingqi suddenly came over. His eyes lit up when he saw them as he panted while his hands were on his knees. Are you all okay? Did you see the zombies, Envy? What's going on? Didn't they guard the gate? How did the zombies get in? Mrs. Tang was furious. It's so much easier during the day than the night. How can they still mess up? It also infuriated Tang Mingqi. It was lucky that we were sharp enough to go to the gate to take a look. We just happened to see a girl called Feng Li opening the door. What? Is she trying to get herself killed? Father Tang said in disbelief. I heard she saw her parents outside the gate and tried to get out, but the two of them had turned into zombies. She then ran past the gate with a group of zombies behind her and didn't close the gate. The others were so scared that they ran away. When we arrived, there were already many zombies inside. Tang Susu furrowed her eyebrows. Although zombies were mere points to her at this stage, no one liked the feeling of their efforts going completely to waste. It wasn't easy to clean up the zombies in the villa district and create a safe and comfortable living space. Do they have to start all over again? But that's not important. Anymore. Something might have happened to you Cheng. Our big brother told me to find you and go back quickly. The two of them understood those zombies were most likely drawn there by the girl called Feng Li who wanted to use them to hurt Susu. They didn't give her any smiles, naturally. How could she do something like this at such a young age? Mr. Tang mumbled as his mindset seemed to have shifted again and again on the same day. When they were halfway home, Tang Mingqi appeared before them. His eyes lit up when he saw them as he panted while his hands were on his knees. Are you all okay? Did you see the zombies? What's going on? Didn't they guard the gate? How did the zombies get in? Mrs. Tang was furious. It's so much easier during the day than the night. How can they still mess up? It also infuriated Tang Mingqi. It was lucky that we were sharp enough to go to the gate to keep an eye on it. It just so happened that we saw a girl called Feng Li opening the gate. What? Is she trying to get herself killed? Father Tang said in disbelief. I heard she saw her parents outside the gate and tried to get out, but the two of them had turned into zombies. She then ran past the gate with a group of zombies behind her and didn't close the gate. The others were so scared that they ran away. When we arrived, there were already many zombies inside. Tang Susu furrowed her eyebrows. Although zombies were mere points to her at this stage, no one liked having to experience the feeling of their efforts going to waste. It wasn't easy to clean up the zombies in the villa district and create a safe and comfortable living space. Do they have to start all over again? But that's not important anymore. Something might have happened to you Cheng. Our big brother told me to find you and go back as soon as possible. Chapter 48 48 Mayday from Nanqing University You are listening at NovelFull.audio 48 Mayday from Nanqing University What did he do this time? Tang Susu knew that many key plot points would happen to the protagonist. It was also the reason she wanted to chase him away. As for why she didn't do it in the end, however. One reason was because of her eldest brother. The other was because she had accidentally overheard her parents' conversation last time. She didn't want them to be living in complete despair. If possible, 
she wanted to establish another contact. There was no harm in linking up with the military. Noel.N. As soon as she reached home, her eldest brother was already waving at her. Susu, over here. Quick. When Tang Susu saw they were all standing instead of sitting on the sofa discussing matters like they usually used to, she knew things were getting out of hand. Especially when Yu Cheng was also visibly tense. What's wrong? Listen to this, Tang Mingzhou quickly gestured to Yu Cheng. Yu Cheng stood still and said, There's no need for this. I'll settle it myself. I don't want to trouble you. Yu Cheng. Tang Mingzhou said in anger. We're friends. I know, but, before he could go into details, the radio in his hand vanished. Tang Susu appeared beside him with no one noticing and snatched the radio away. Then she quickly pressed a button. What are you doing? Yu Qing stretched out, trying to take the radio back. Tang Susu took two steps back, sensing his intention. Look at the situation we're in. Stop throwing tantrums. Yu Qing could only feel the absurdity of the situation he was in. In the past, she had always been the one throwing tantrums. At this moment, a hoarse voice came from the radio. However, the speaker uttered each word clearly and with a sense of urgency. Can anyone read me? Please respond if you can read me. We are at Nanching University. We are from the Triple X Company of the Northern Command. We're requesting immediate backup from the South City military. Requesting immediate backup. We have a hundred survivors all gathered at the bio labs. Our exact coordinates are Triple X. We are running out of ammunition. Many of our members are injured. At least a thousand zombies are surrounding us. We are requesting ammunition and weapons to be airdropped. If any South City citizens with sufficient resources want to support us, do so when you are in no threat to yourselves. Only support us through the air. I repeat. Only support us through the air. All other citizens do not approach Nanching University under any circumstances. In the end, the voice paused, as if the speaker was struggling to make the last call out. More than a hundred teachers and students are waiting for your assistance. Please answer if you copy. Over. When the heart-wrenching announcement stopped, the living room became so quiet that one could hear a pin drop. Gloom filled Mr. Tang's expression. He thought of the soldier who had communicated through the radio and asked for help for a long time. His voice was gruff and weak, with a faint sense of despair. If they wanted to, they had a high chance of escaping, but they didn't want to leave the survivors behind. Even at such a critical moment, they still choose to let others know their own limits before helping them. For a moment, he couldn't help but look at his daughter. They had all seen how insightful she could be for the past few days. What would she do? Tang Susu, who had received all their attention, furrowed her eyebrows. No one knew what she was thinking. Tang Mingchu couldn't bear to see her like this, so he answered on her behalf, no matter how powerful we are, we can only kill a few zombies. But we're talking about at least a thousand zombies and at least a hundred survivors. It means that it will be very dangerous and stretch our resources to the extreme. It's not that we don't want to help, but this far exceeds our capabilities. Tang Mingchi also agreed with this point. But we might be able to provide some help. Tang Susu remained silent. It had been so long that Yu Qing felt like he was a joke, where he was forced into a situation where he had to obey her. For a moment, he actually held some expectations of her. Yu Qing pursed his lips, but still gave his friend's shoulder a grateful pat. Thanks, I'm leaving. Yu Qing, the man didn't turn back. He didn't want to drag his good friend's family into this. He would always remember the warmth that the Tang family had given him all these years. Stop. Chapter 49 49 An Important Decision You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. 49 An Important Decision The voice was like a ray of light piercing through the dark fog hovering over them all. Everyone turned to look at her with high expectations. 
Susu, leave. Where will you go? When you spoke to them earlier, they should have warned you not to go over and save anyone without thorough consideration, right? Tang Susu said in a brash tone. Dot Yu Cheng could not help but stop dead in his tracks. How did she know everything about that? No. Who was she again? How could she speak to him in such a tone? Tang Susu, stay out of my business. He frowned as he looked at her with eyes full of aggression. If you won't let us tell you how stupid you are, you won't even know how you end up dead when the time comes. Tang Susu's tone at this moment was even more unpleasant. It was even worse than what Yu Cheng had said to the original Tang Susu in the past. Yu Cheng's face darkened and harsh words were about to come out of his mouth. Also, I'm not worried about you. I'm just worried that the high command will punish those soldiers for not completing their mission to protect you. Don't think too highly of yourself. You. Yu Cheng was so irritated that he let out a laugh. Punishment. We'll talk about punishment once we survive this. As he said that, his voice trailed off because all the members of the Tang family were looking at Tang Susu in awe. Susu, you agree to help. When did I say I won't? Tang Susu raised her eyebrow with a serious expression on her face. Yu Cheng looked at the delicate girl in front of her in disbelief. But we have to be prepared, Tang Susu was also getting a little tired from all the work, so she sat down on the sofa. One by one, they all sat down on the sofa and began expressing their opinions as her calmness affected them. We have to find more people to take part in the rescue mission since we can't do it alone. We also have to think of a way to move the survivors away. Can you just save those soldiers and ignore everyone else? Tang Ming Chu mumbled to himself, but Mr. Tang smacked him on the head as soon as he heard that. You're a student at Nanchen University too. He stood up and said, we're not supermen. What little abilities we have in fighting zombies, we earned them after going through hardships for so many days. We're all humans and we all get tired. We can get hurt too, and we'll even die. Why can they enjoy our protection when they did nothing to deserve it? His words made everyone fall silent. Then we give them weapons to join the battle. Those with courage will survive, and those without will have to depend on their luck. Tang Susu made her final decision. Even if her third eldest brother didn't mention it, she would have mentioned it in time. The others had no objections, even Yu Cheng. He only wanted to save his uncle's trusted subordinates and underlings. They were also his respected friends and brothers. In arms. After another ten minutes of discussion, a very uncomfortable Yu Ching hurried home to get a cache of weapons that he had brought in. Tang Susu threw all the supplies in the villa into the system's inventory. She could guarantee that as soon as they left this place, Jean Dehai and his gang would come in to seize the supplies without wasting even a second. Tang Susu smiled icily. She would never give them such an opportunity. In just a few minutes, the family looked at the empty villa and sighed. This way, we don't have to worry about our rear. I'll go back to my room for a while, Tang Susu climbed upstairs with a grave expression on her face. Mr. and Mrs. Tang's hearts ached for her as they watched her frail figure. While it'll be helpful for us to save those soldiers, we shouldn't have made her worry about this. Tang Mingzhou consoled them and said, we're not as sharp as she is. We'll follow her judgment. Back in her room, Tang Susu's fingers were operating on a transparent light screen that was floating in front of her with speed and precision. What are your thoughts about this? This trip is hazardous and has little beneficial value for you. This is not a good deal. Yes, but it might trigger an emergency mission like last time. With the level of danger this time around, it should be an SS. rank mission at the very least, right? An SS rank mission was worth 500 points. Chapter 50 50 Buffing You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. 50 Buffing, please be reminded that such an opportunity is scarce and the probability of running into it is even lower than winning a lottery. Please make your decision carefully. What's there to be afraid of? 
let's take a gamble. Who knows, we might be able to win something good, Tang Su Su said in a playful voice, but her beautiful face was growing tense. Despite the struggles visible through her eyes, she still clicked on it in the end. Before 008 could react, the 176 points in his points window had dropped to 76 points. My points. I don't want to be a level zero system again. You turn on your words. You said you would upgrade me. Stay put. Don't make a fuss, Tang Susu bit her lower lips as she was in pain. Her face turned pale and then turned red again. That was the blood in her body was circulating in reverse. NGH, she groaned and almost fell to her knees. What happened took the system by surprise just as it was drowning itself in its own sorrows. Hang on. As the level increases, the pain you experience when leveling up will also escalate. This is because what you're doing is equivalent to tempering the muscles and bones so that we can build a more powerful body for you. Why didn't you tell me it's going to be so painful leveling up from point 0.4 to point 0.3? The pain shook her. Fortunately, the pain didn't last too long. It only lasted for about a minute. She heaved a long sigh of relief as if she had just come back to life. Then, a sublime sense of comfort surged through her entire body. Her heart, which was quite weak without the support of medicine, even seemed to have grown an additional layer. Tang Susu's eyes lit up. She had never realized the value of health when she was healthy. And only now did she know it was much more fulfilling to recover her health bit by bit compared to being given free money. Congratulations. You have reached level. 3. Tang Susu looked at her wealth points. What could she buy with 275 million? Weapons. Ammunition. Invisibility talisman. A helicopter. There were too many that she could choose from. Tang Susu hesitated for a long time before choosing 5 mega enhanced strength pills and grace pills. 100 million was gone in the blink of an eye. She also bought some invisibility talismans as her ultimate weapon. One cost 2 million while three only cost 5 million. Tang Susu spent a total of 50 million, meaning everyone had five talismans, and each one could allow them to turn invisible for 10 minutes. After that, she bought 25 million worth of ammunition, which she could give some to Yu Qing later. However, because of the high prices in the system store, 25 million was not a lot of ammunition. It was not enough to help others, so she had to think of something else. Tang Susu didn't touch the remaining 100 million wealth points as she kept it for later use. The more critical the situation was, the more cards Tang Susu would have to keep in her sleeves in case of unexpected situations. She then brought the items to her family. These are grace pills and strength pills. You can choose one based on your own circumstances. It can enhance your ability in that area within seven days. Despite saying that, she had already planned everything in her head. Dot sure enough, her mother and big brother chose the grace pill, while the other three chose the strength pill in excitement. Her third brother even swallowed it without even asking questions. This is great. This is some super powerful buff. In less than half a minute, he could feel the power surging in his body. In the past, he couldn't even lift a piece of iron. But now he felt like he could lift an entire gym. Meanwhile, the others treated him like a lab rat. Seeing that he didn't have any side effects after eating the pill, they also swallowed it. Yu Qing could hear the Tang family's laughter from far away. When he got closer, he saw their faces were so full of joy. It was like they were preparing for the Lunar New Year. He was about to ask them what happened out of curiosity. When they noticed his arrival, they immediately stopped laughing. Here it is again. That feeling of not belonging. In the past, he had never felt it being so strong because of Tang Susu's pursuit of his love. Now that Tang Susu had stopped trying to court him, he kept on feeling that something was missing. There's also this, Tang Susu took out a stack of yellow talisman paper with cinnabar runes written on them. 
She hid nothing from Yu Cheng and continued, everyone gets five. They can save your life in times of need. The five of them didn't hesitate and accepted it happily. Products made by Susu were guaranteed in their quality. Only Tang Mingzhou was kind enough to give Yu Cheng one before he put his talismans away. For protection. Yu Cheng could not produce even a word. Since when did they become so superstitious?